Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to tell you all I know about the House of Wisdom of the Abyssin Dynasty. This is another one of those videos where I analyze the landmarks of every civilization, but of course it will be a bit different since Abyssin don't have the landmark mechanic to go through the different ages, but instead they have this one unique building, the House of Wisdom, that they expand to go through the different ages. So. I will talk about this one and also the two more mechanics that are connected to the House of Wisdom just because if you want to play Abbasid it's really important that you know about this other thing even if they're not directly connected to going to different ages. So that was it for the introduction and now we go into the video. Okay guys we are finally in game, this video will be divided in parts and the first one we are seeing right now we'll be just discussing the House of Wisdom itself, so the building and not the wings and the which ones you should choose and whatever. So let's just discuss the, the building itself first. So when you start the game with Abbasid, you just do your normal stuff, you go on food, you go on gold, whatever, but you need to build the House of Wisdom, like, not immediately, but before you're ready to click up, right? Before you're ready to go feudal and you have your resources ready, because um, you need to first build the House of Wisdom and then build uh, the expansion. So if you were to wait until you're ready to go to the next stage to build the House of Wisdom, you would lose some time. The building itself costs only um, 50 wood and takes 30 seconds to build. So again, you can see it's something that you need to build immediately. So it's cheap, it's fast. It doesn't take too much time of your villager. And once you build it, this is how it looks. You, you will already notice that it has this orange area around it. I will explain everything now. So let's read the description together. Contains civilization technologies, which are these four over here. Abyssid advances through the ages with the House of Wisdom by building wings. These four are the wings that you can choose from. To get to the next age, you can build one every time you reach up, and once you are in Peer Age, you can build the last one if you want for the same price that you have to pay to go in Peer Age. Each uh, wing, then, as you can see, gains may will make you gain additional technologies, and these are the technologies that you unlock by going to by choosing a, a certain wing. So, economic wing will make you give you access to this free but they don't have only the economic wing requirement but also the uh, feudal age castle age or imperial age so it's divided this area is divided in uh, columns which are the wing requirement and rows which are the age requirement feudal castle imperial economic military culture and trade wing but let's get, let's keep going and buildings within the influence gain plus fire fire armor and structures built within the influence help progress to the golden age. Now, this influence area that it's mentioned is this one over here. You can see it's already been expanded by the town center because the town center is included. So how to understand the building is um, uh, under the influence of the House of Wisdom. It has this uh, orange plus on top of it and on around it it has this orange area how do you expand and include buildings in this area really simple you can see that every building you can build aside from uh, farms you can see farms and uh, walls also all the other buildings have this white area around it if you build uh, uh, if you place the building in a certain spot, making so that the white area overlaps uh, with the orange area, the building will be included in the influence and it will expand the orange area. So as you can see, it doesn't even have to touch, like the building itself, the house, doesn't have to be inside the area of the House of Wisdom or of the town center. It can, ju can just be like in proximity with the white terrain. So we build this here. Let's take these ones. I don't need the resources. So 
So you see these two houses are now inside. We can also build a barrack. It overlaps over here, so we build the barrack. We then build, I don't know, let's say we need a mining camp over here. We build the mining camp, it's in. I told you to build a mining camp. And then, like, I don't know, let's say we need a mill over here. We build a mill, everything is set. But even if it's, like, already, you can build it even inside over here, of course. So this house is completely included, so of course it will be under the influence. Why do you want to play around this orange area? Well, we just read, uh, we just read the reasons. Every building in this area gets plus fire, fire armor, and the fire armor is useful to like resist uh, the torches thrown by like units and villagers, you know, and like, well, like spearmen and cavalry will attack your buildings. They will not do it with their swords or with their spears. They will do it with torches. So each torch will do five less damage with this bonus and also most importantly every structure inside here will help you progress to this golden age the golden age bonuses are something that abyssid relies a lot on and you have to unlock them as fast as you can or at least you don't have to spam structures but you need to make sure that the structures that you build are mainly connected to the house of wisdom this is because as you can see the, the bonuses are really good you get 10% gathering rate for the first tier, 15% gathering rate and 15% research speed for the second tier, and then uh, you get 20% on these two bonuses plus a 20% production speed, which means the speed that you produce a unit set. So really strong bonuses, you need to get them. You need 10 structures, 30 and 60 for each uh, tier, and uh, you will see now we have uh, like seven structures out of ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The House of Wisdom will never be included in the count. So if, if we were to build three more, we will get to the next, uh, to the first Golden Age tier. And this is, this was really all that you need to know about this uh, area of influence mechanic. Now let's see the, the technologies. The technologies are these four, uh, once is unlocked in Feudal Age, once is unlocked in Castle and the other two in Imperial Age. They don't have any uh, specific wing requirement and that's the reason why they are on this part of the menu. They are, well, they are all military technologies and let's just see them together. The first one is Phalanx, you get that in Feudal Age and increases the range. This was the sound of getting to the Golden Age, so as you can see we unlock the tier 1. But let's go back to Phalanx, uh, extra range on Spearmen, not that game changing but for the price it helps your Spearmen get a couple of extra shots in. Then uh, Camel Handling, movement speed on Camel units, Camel units are the unique units of um, Abbasid and since they generally, they're both like on like sort of cavalry units, they're on Camel, whatever. Movement speed is really good especially because you want to chase cavalry with them so it's useful. Then we have uh, composite bows, uh, faster firing archers in Imperial Age. If you're, if you're going archers, this is really good, but uh, be wary of the price, it's pretty expensive. And then we also have camel barding, plus two melee armor and uh, ranged armor on all camel units, so both the camel rider and camel archer, but again expensive so just if you're going uh, with a lot of camels not just one or two and so that was it for the um, general things that are not related to wings so now we get into the part of the video uh, actually about the wings so you have these four over here economic military culture and trade each wing cost uh, the same that any other civilization will pay to go to to build their landmark to go to feudal to castle and imperial so 400 uh, food and 200 gold for the feudal one a 1200 food and 600 gold for the castle age one and 2400 food and 1200 gold to get to imperial age and again the last one the one that you will be left out again 2400 uh, food and 1200 gold, the same to Imperial. 
uh, how do you actually go to the next stage you simply click on the wing once you have the resource you don't have to send like villagers to uh, build the wing it just builds like as if it was uh, a technology there's also one thing that's not mentioned that is that your each wing that you build will add some extra hp to your house of wisdom and why is that really important because you will know that if you want to win the game like one of the win conditions in age one plus four is destroying the enemy landmarks and that of course also for you if the enemy destroys your landmarks uh, you lose the game but how does your landmarks work if you don't have landmarks you, you just have your town center well you only have the house of wisdom and if your opponent destroys the house of wisdom and your main town center they will win the game and that's kind of dangerous because well, generally you will build you cannot move the house of wisdom around you will keep it where you built it at the beginning and at the beginning you will build it close to the to the town center which means that imagine i have my base if an enemy pushes me like right here with uh, with bombards or trebuchet it destroys this it destroys this and it's over i may have like thousands of castles behind here it doesn't matter well maybe with another sieve you would have like a landmark over here then landmark over here and then landmark over here and until they push this 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 and then the town center i would still be able to like kind of maybe push them back or do something so it's really important that we get that extra 5000 hp because once you have fully built your house of wisdom you will have a 20 22000 hp building uh, still bombers get that down really quickly but uh, at least it's something and then uh, last thing to mention about the wing the wing upgrade is that it always takes two minutes so going feudal will take two minutes going castle will take two minutes going Piro will take two minutes um again it's good because you don't have to dedicate any villagers to that but if you want to get to go to the next age faster than like two minutes well you cannot do that one last thing i will tell you before discussing these 12 technologies which are the actual bonuses we get to for going to the next stage is uh, one thing that you should really keep in mind when playing Abbasid is that the wings and technologies you have over here share the, the, the queue, right? You may think that maybe going to, since like the other civilization can just go to the next stage and build a landmark while doing everything else, uh, Abbasid have like a, a way that these two things they don't interfere since both going to the next stage is important and also getting your technologies is important but no that doesn't work if you're researching something and you queue up your your wing you have to wait for the technology to complete before starting the the timer for the wing and vice versa so if you have the wing over here and you need this technology over here we'll have you will have to wait two minutes and then the one minute 30 for composite bows will stop so keep in mind this for example, you are going uh, Imperial, you're going Castle Age, let's say you're going, uh, you want to go Imperial and you um, you queued up these two technologies and you queued them up before, then you, you get the resources finally to Imperial, you go, you queue up the, the wing and you just leave it there expecting to go Imperial Age in two minutes. Then you look at the timer and two minutes have passed and you're not Imperial Age and you see that it, it has not even started and that can be a real problem. Or even like the opposite, maybe you start going Castle Age, but you're you're almost taking a, like you're going to take a big fight. You need uh, camel support, but camel support uh, will not actually be unlocked until you finish your wing, and then all the extra minute for camel support. So really take into consideration what you want to complete first. And now let's look at these 12 technologies. These are the, like what uh, replaces the bonuses that other civ will get from the landmarks, so we expect them to be good. And some of these are actually really strong. Let's start for the economic wing ones. And we have fresh food stuff, um, reduce the cost to produce villages by 
really good early game. If you get it from early game, it's really good. With villagers costing only 25 food. Then we have uh, villagers gathering rate from farm 15%. This is good once you are deep into a good farming eco. And then villagers drop off 8% more resources. This is the Imperial Age one. And again, another really good economic um, economic tech that means that every resource collected by villagers is going to be 8% more basically while well, instead like traders and whatever else is not going to be affected then we have the military ones camel support camels increase the armor of nearby infantry by plus one and both uh, when it says armor in general it means both types of armor this really plays a lot into how Abbasid wants to play with some camels here and there to debuff their, the enemy cavalry, buff uh, your infantry and then a lot of infantry to build siege on the spot and push and attack and, and whatever. Then we have instead ones that are specific for camels and I would say even more specific for camels to fight cavalry because camel, it affects only camel riders the ones with the, the sword, the ones good against cavalry, and it improves their melee armor by three. And again, the melee armor good against, but well, also infantry, but especially good against cavalry. And finally, the Imperial Age one increases health of all infantry by 15%. Huge technologies, and that's something you want to get as soon, like definitely before the big fights and stuff. Then we have the culture wings. This is another tech like fresh food stuff that you want, you want to try to get as early as possible and get full effect of it. And it is preservation of knowledge, 30% uh, uh, reduce cost on all your technologies. So if you plan to go culture wing second, because you generally go economic uh, wing first, uh, you should really try to hold on on researching any stuff that you can delay so that you can then research this as fast as you can. And then uh, get a lot of value from researching stuff once this is complete. These two instead are pretty bad. We have medical centers, which makes uh, keeps uh, heal nearby units, but it's not even that, that impressive of a heal, honestly. And then we have faith, which uh, makes monks um, have Age of Empires 2 conversion, which means that they can convert uh, without needing relics, but only one unit at a time. But like Considering the use of monks, uh, I don't think this is too crazy of a technology. And lastly, we have the technologies for the uh, trade wing, the ones that I have not already done. And we have spice roads, increases the gold income from traders by 30%. Uh, armored caravans, plus 5 armors on traders and trade ship. And then Grand Bazaar, which makes gives you the opportunity to select a different resource uh, from gold. And every trader will get 25% uh, of their gold. Will, like Based on their gold, they will give you 25% also on that uh, resource that you will select. But only on the base gold value. So how does it work? Let's say you have a trader that has both of these technologies and is bringing back 100 gold. If you have, Because of this one, it will bring back 130 gold and because of this one it will bring it back also let's say you have selected food but the food will be calculated not on the 130 gold but on the 100 so it will bring back at the end 130 gold and 25 um, food and um, generally these are technologies that can be useful but only once you have a good trade going on so already kind of later into the game and we finally arrived at the last part of the video where i'm going to tell you what i would uh, like the order i would uh, build the wings so for feudal castle imperial and also the pros and cons of this system compared to the landmark one so really quickly i think you should generally go economic wing first because you need fresh food stuff and then this one can come in handy in castle age then uh, culture wing with also like delay delaying all the technologies that you don't really need immediately in feudal so that you can get 
like full value out of this one and then in Peter Leeds you go military wing especially because of boot camp like it's essential in most games and I think it can really be helpful at least this one like boot camp and camo support in the late game really help and generally trade wing is the one that will end up being your fourth option and let's be honest I think rarely you will end up building all four wings in your house of wisdom since going imperial is already expensive it doesn't happen in all games going double imperial these technologies are good but <laughs> double imperial is a seriously big investment so just generally is economic culture and military there may be some scenarios when you go like military second it happened to me once uh, up to now because I went I went again up against a, a really aggressive English player so if you're forced into a long feudal age where you have you're forced to get the blacksmith upgrades the eco upgrades because it's going on like a law and you have already a big army and you think that maybe since you're both so aggressive the, the game is going to end in castle age then you can go military military wing in castle age and get like the camel support and then also the camel rider if needed because you probably wouldn't really get much out of this preservation of knowledge what you absolutely shouldn't do is leaving the military wing and for for last right going like eco culture and trade because if you never get this boot camp if you never get this camel support you're losing out on so much that like can uh, Abbasid can do especially like boot camp combined with uh, uh, elite army tactics uh, makes really strong spearmen and men at arms and then you also have a uh, phalanx for spearmen so you see where like the the sieve is going and then finally la well, lastly the the pros and cons i would say the pros of Abbasid are that you have a lot of choice in terms of bonuses and like it's really well around bonuses you have military you have economic ones you have trade with something pretty rare so really a lot of variety in bonuses and also another pro is that you don't have to dedicate villagers to going to the next stage when going castle in imperial general you put like 10 plus villagers and that's like those are all extra resources that you get but in terms of bonuses like the land bonuses of the landmarks compared to the bonuses of the of embassy i don't know that really specific would like uh, come down to the specific single civilizations being uh, uh, being compared with embassy so let's say that these uh, technologies can pretty much be equal to the bonuses of a free landmarks that you would get with another sieve because you generally you won't get all of these technologies so in your average game the technologies that you will research are like comparable to the bonuses that the other player will get from from its landmarks and the cons instead i think that there's a really big problem with fantasy and that's that you don't get anything uh in once you go to the next stage that's so bad because when you go to next stage you invest a lot of resources and getting that bonus from the landmark is always good right you get like you get you product you produce units or like you get economic bonus or you get like a strong defensive structure instead with obviously you don't get anything you need to spend more resources and you need to wait more time to get your camel support you need to wait to get your your boot camp once you get imperial and that you really feel that while you feel like you both go to the next stage but he's one step ahead and the last downside when playing with Abbasid is what I mentioned earlier in the video you will have in every game your house of wisdom and main TC close to each other if you lose both of them it's over you may have all the technologies you want all the fire armor golden ages and stuff but if someone arrives over here with bombards it's over and you can go to the next one so make sure to make place at least some castles something if you feel like the game is going to end up in you fighting in your base 
Okay guys, that was the end of the video about the House of Wisdom. I apologize for the lack of visual variety, it was pretty much all the time staring at the, at the menus of the House of Wisdom, but I think that was the best way is to make sure that you are familiar with it once you get in game. Like, I want to make sure that if you actually have been sitting through all of this video, you know for sure that if you get into the game, you know where everything is, you know where to, how, how to check where like your golden ages, you know where certain uh, technologies are, you know to how to understand the requirements and everything. So I think that was the best and you can just put it on second monitor of course. These, these are videos that can be even on the fourth monitor for <laughs> more or how they're made. And I thank you for if you actually watch all of the video and I have uh, one for Rust landmarks and one for English landmarks on my channel so if you need help with those two you can already find them and there may be more in the future so thank you for watching all of this and see you in the next one